This is how to build a character in Shadowrun 5th edition in about 12 minutes. Shadowrun, it's a classless system. It is a skill-based system. So if you're used to building in D&D, this is a little bit different, but follow along. It's not that hard, and actually it's pretty fun. So first, you pick a meta type. The meta type in Shadowrun is your species or your, your race in other systems. You can pick a meta type from the meta type attribute table over on page 66. On your character sheet, add the low number, that's the one to the left of the slash, to its corresponding attribute. There are eight attributes, body, agility, reaction, strength, willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma. There are also two special attributes listed in the table, edge and essence. Fill those in as well. You can ignore the I and I column, that's the initiative column, so just leave the initiative box on your character sheet blank. As you can see, I'm using a computer spreadsheet that's analogous to the paper character sheet in the back of the Shadowrun book. It's just easier for me to do it this way for the video. Okay, next you can boost your special attributes. Turn to the priority table on page 65. This table is tricky at first, but it makes sense after you've used it a few times. The priority table is a sliding scale for your character traits. For each column across the top, you choose one and only one cell from rows A down to E. For example, if you want to be really, really rich, then you'd choose row A for the column labeled resources, but that means you can't use row A for any other column. A different example, maybe you don't care about wealth. You do want to have a lot of skills. In that case, you'd choose row A for the column skills and row B or C or D or E for resources. By the end of the process, you've chosen exactly one cell from each row for each column, but never the same row twice. To keep things simple for your first build, I recommend choosing cells that give you the least choice. It's kind of weird because this means you're going to have less to choose from, but when you're just starting out, that can be a good thing. It's hard to choose stuff when you don't yet have any context for what a good or bad choice is. Boost your special attributes. For the meta type column of the priorities table on page 65, Choose row B, as in beta. This column grants you a number of special attribute points. It's the number in parentheses after your meta type. For example, human 7, 7 is the number of points you have to spend. On your character sheet, use these points to boost the following values in the attributes section. Edge, you can think of this as luck. There's a maximum of 6, unless you're a human, which has a maximum of 7. Use most of your special attribute budget here. Magic and resonance. How magical you are. There's a maximum of six, and you're going to get a boost to this later in this build, so for now, don't spend anything on this stat. If you chose the human or elf meta type, you may have a point left over at the end. That's just because this build is flexible. Anything lower than row B excludes trolls, and I wanted all meta types to be available to you. Next time you build a character, you can choose different rows so that you're not wasting any points. This is kind of the way of Shadowrun, though. There's always a choice to be made, and everything has a cost. Boost your physical and mental attributes. For the attributes column on page 65, choose row C, as in Charlie. This grants you 16 points to spend on your physical, that's body, agility, reaction, and strength, and mental, willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma attributes found in the attributes section of your character sheet. No attribute score may exceed its maximum. The maximum is the number after the slash in the meta type attribute table on page 66, and only one one may meet its maximum. There are two attributes to focus on as a magic user. Willpower, this helps you resist drain after you've cast a spell. Make this your highest stat. Maximum is seven for dwarves or six for everyone else. Logic or charisma. You can use either logic or charisma for spell casting, so make one of these your highest, your, your other high score. Choose your magic and resonance rating. Strictly speaking, you're really just choosing a magic rating. It's just labeled magic or resonance. Resonance is for, for technomancers, and I'll cover that in a separate video. So for the magic or resonance column, choose A. In the interest of keeping your first build simple and easy to understand, you're going to be playing a magician. 
A magician is just the Shadowrun term for a generic magic user. You'll have access to all of the different kinds of magic with no restriction. You won't have to read through a bunch of paragraphs with exceptions about what you can or can't use. You just have access to everything. As a magician, you are granted a magic rating of 6. Write that in your magic resonance score on your character sheet. The maximum is 6. Choose your magic skills. According to row A, magicians get two rating five magic skills. That's from a list starting on page 142. And ten spells from section eight magic on page 276. Write your choice of magical skills in the skills section of your character sheet. The RTG column in your character sheet stands for rating, and the rating of your magic skills in this case is 5, because row A says so. It says you get two rating 5 magic skills, so that's what you're taking. Choose spells. To choose spells, you need to know the basics of how magic in Shadowrun works. As a magic user, you follow either the Hermetic or Shamanic traditions. Hermetic mages use logic and willpower, while shamans use charisma and willpower. Choose whichever tradition is best for you based on your attribute scores. If you gave yourself more logic than anything else, then you become a hermetic mage. If you gave yourself a bunch of charisma, then become a shaman. When you cast a spell, you choose how much energy you want to use when casting it. This is the spell's force. It can be as low as 2 or as high as your magic rating, which is 6 in this case, times 2. In other words, you can cast using force anywhere from 2 all the way up to 12. When you roll to cast a spell, you can only count a number of hits equal to the spell's force. So the more force, the better. Except that after you've cast a spell, you take stun damage equal to the spell's drain. And drain is based on how much force you used to cast the spell. So the higher the force, the higher the damage you're going to take after casting the spell. The good news is that hermetic mages get to roll logic plus willpower to resist drain damage, and shamans get to roll charisma plus willpower to resist drain damage. Every successful hit prevents one point of drain damage. You don't have a maximum number of spells per day or anything like that. You're limited only by your magic rating and your ability to resist drain. So look at page 276 in the section in section 8 labeled magic and look through all of the different spells. You're a magician so you have access to everything. So take a couple of combat spells, take some detection spells, some health spells, illusion, manipulation. Take a mix of whatever looks cool to you. Take a look for a moment at Mana Bolt on page 284. This is a classic spell. Mana Bolt is a direct combat spell of type M, which stands for mana. Mana spells can affect things on both the physical plane and the astral plane whereas physical type P spells, they only affect things on the physical plane. The range is line of sight, so you need to see what you're casting a spell on. The damage that it deals is P for physical, duration is I for instant, and the drain is F for force, force minus three. So if you cast Mana Bolt at force three, then you'll take zero stun damage after casting it, but you can only ever do three points of damage to your target. That may not be enough. If you cast it at force 12, then you can do up to 12 damage to your target. You could potentially take nine points of stun damage. As I've said before, in Shadowrun, there are choices to make and everything has its cost. Write your spells in the Spells, Preparations, Rituals, Complex Forms section of your character sheet. Skills. Back at the priority table on page 65, choose E for the skills column. Turn to page 130 to read through the skills available. Each skill at rating 1 costs 1 point. After you have a skill, each point spent on that skill 
raises its rating by one. So if you spend three points on negotiation, then you have negotiation three. If a skill has a specialization listed, then you can spend another point to gain a plus two die for skill tests that involve your area of specialization. For example, the navigation skill costs one point to add to your character sheet's skills section. Were you to take that skill, you'd write navigation one on your character sheet to indicate that you have the navigation skill at rating one. You might spend another point though to specialize in celestial navigation. In that case, you write navigation celestial one plus two on your character sheet. Resources. Back to the priority table on page 65. For the final column, choose the only row that's left, row D for delta. This gives you 50,000 new yen. New yen is money in Shadowrun. The gear checklist sidebar on page 94 can help you focus on what's essential, but if you happen to have the Run Faster source book, shopping is even easier. Run Faster has pre-made packs of gear on page 228, uh, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle kits, magic packs, and a whole lot more. But assuming you're just using the core rulebook, here's a basic Shadowrunner pack costing 20,000 new yen. You want a fake sin, that's rating 1, page 443. Metalink comlink, page 439. Colt America Light 36, or L36 Light Pistol, with two spare clips. It's on page 426. 100 rounds of ammo, page 433. A knife, page 423. Armor clothing or a vest, page 436. Glasses with image link, page 444. Mapsoft for the city that you're running the camp you're playing the campaign in, page 442. Standard cred stick, page 443. A flashlight, 449. A respirator, rating 1, page 449. And a backpack. That leaves 30,000 new yen to spend on these important additions. A dock wagon contract, page 450. That'll save your life. Magical goods, page 316. And a lifestyle, on page 95. Spend every last new yen you have, because you can't take any into the game. The new yen you start with in the game is derived from your lifestyle. So spend money on a lifestyle and then roll the die listed by that lifestyle to find out how much new yen you get for in-game pocket money. Spend karma and get contacts. In Shadowrun, you don't earn experience points, you earn karma. At character creation, you start with 25 karma to spend. Turn to page 73 and look at the positive qualities and negative qualities table. Positive qualities cost karma points, and they grant you some in-game benefit. Negative qualities give you back karma points, but they impose some kind of in-game penalty. This is probably my favorite part of the Shadowrun build process. Read over the qualities, choose some positive and negative qualities for your character. You can only have 25 points of positive qualities, 25 points of negative qualities, so don't feel like you have to hit zero karma. After you've recorded your qualities, turn to page 98 to learn what you can do with any leftover karma points you might have. A shadow runner thrives on contacts. Contacts cost karma. And you have to spend karma on two different traits of your contact. There's the contact's connections and the contact's loyalty. The contact's connection represents how much influence they have in the world to get things done. The higher the number, the more influential, the more powerful that contact is. Their loyalty represents how much of a risk they're willing to go to in order to help you when you make a request. A contact costs one karma for each point of connection rating and one karma for each point of loyalty rating. For example, let's say I've already spent 17 karma on qualities, positive and negative qualities. So I have eight more karma left that I have to get rid of. 
I decide to spend them on contacts. I could spend all eight on a fairly well-connected beat cop, a connection rating of five, meaning the beat cop knows several people and has a moderate degree of social influence. I don't think my game master would expect a beat cop to have any greater than a five. In fact, five might be pushing it. Maybe I'll knock that down to a four uh, connection rating and then a loyalty rating of, say, four. He's my buddy. Actual friendship. That's going to be my get-out-of-jail-free card. Then again, maybe I don't want to spend it all on one eventuality. Maybe I don't want to assume I'm going to get caught. So instead, maybe I have a mechanic contact with a connection rating of three and a loyalty of two. That's five spent. And a fence with a connection rating of two and a loyalty of one, just business. Whatever you decide, contacts are the way you're going to interface with the world outside of your own party. They're important. You want to have a couple of friends around to help you through tough times. In case you need help coming up with a contact, there are sample ones on page 390, which you can just use, or you can use to base your own idea of, of a contact that you might have. The additional purchases and restrictions table on page 98 provides six different ways you can spend excess karma, along with associated restrictions. Initiative and limits. Time for some final calculations. Turn to page 101 and use the final calculations table to determine the value for the empty fields remaining on your character sheet. If you purchased a comm link, then your data processing score is the rating of your comm link. If you didn't get a comm link, you can ignore matrix values altogether. Ignore the living persona section, that's just for technomancers. And now you have a character. Shadowrun 5th edition is a complex system, so this character build is intentionally limiting. You might not understand everything on your character sheet at first, but playing the game is the best way to learn how it works. So go play with this character. It might not be the most amazing character. You're not getting as much choice as you possibly could, but it gets you started, and that's the most important thing. I think I'm contractually obligated to say things like chummer and oh my, I'll see you in the shadows.